Hey, we're back with our final ETL uh, workflow. So now we're going to take the data that we wrote to Google Cloud Storage, process it, and write it to Google BigQuery, an OBLAP database. And this kind of mirrors a t traditional data engineering workflow where you take data uh, from some external source, stage it in Cloud Storage, and then write it um, typically to a database. So we'll create a new pipeline, batch again, as we're uh, familiar with this at this uh, point. And we'll name this one um, GCS to BigQuery. So first step is going to be loading our data, um, which exists in Google Cloud Storage. So we can just do like a data loader with Python from Google Cloud Storage, and we'll call this load uh, taxi GCS. So now we have our data loader. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, so we know the bucket name, we know the, the name of the file. Um, we're gonna use the unpartitioned file for this demo. Um, if you wanted to, you could use uh, Pyero, the same uh, similar method, um, reading re to read a table from cloud storage. Um, but we're just going to use our template um, to read uh, uh, our, the the Parquet Taxi data. We actually don't need an assertion here, so we'll run this. This is actually the same test that we ran earlier. Um, should get back our data set. There we go. So now we're going to do a little transformation. Um, Another best practice, we'll call this transform stage data, is to standardize column names. So you might notice uh, vendor ID, there's like some capital letters, there's like under cases and others. Um, that's not very good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna standardize uh, our, our column names. So um, a good way to do this in pandas is to say data.columns equals data.columns um, and then you can define the transformations that you'd like to happen, and this will actually rename the columns. So what we'll do is we'll say, uh, take those as a string, and we're going to replace um, uh, any spaces with underscores. And we're going to um, also lower any capital letters. So that should fix our column issues. We'll return data. And we could write an assertion here. Um, I think we're pretty safe for this one, but we'll run this just to be sure. Beautiful. So now we have some standardized column names. We don't have to worry about uh, any capital letters. And now we'll export um, our data. We'll use a SQL exporter since we haven't done that just yet. So we'll uh, we'll call this uh, write uh, taxi to BigQuery. And now we'll use our BigQuery default connection. Um, and we can actually just specify the database uh, schema and table. Um, the database should be default, but we'll, we'll call the schema NY taxi, and we'll call the table yellow cab data. So cool thing about Mage is you can um, select directly from data frames. So uh, the transform stage data block is going to return uh, DF1. So we could do like select star from df1 and this is going to select all the rows from the previous table and then export them um, to our ny taxi uh, schema and table let's run this see what happens connecting exporting um, also a big data set still a million and uh, a quarter rows so this might take um, a few seconds to run um, but while that's running, we can actually pull up BigQuery and see the results, uh, assuming it, it completes correctly. So we'll go to Google BigQuery. We have our project here. And you can see NY Taxi now exists. Uh, written today, this is the 14th here. Um, so I don't think the, the table actually exists yet, or, or we're just looking at the, the schema uh, and the nodes are loading, it's still exporting data. Um, this might take a minute. We'll come back when it's done and uh, we'll see what we got. And we're back. So um, I'm going to walk through what happened. There was a little snafu. Uh, so if you run into something similar, here's what you can do. Basically, my project has the word current in it, and that's a reserved word in um, uh, BigQuery SQL. So I was getting errors with the SQL data exporter. If you run this in uh, using a Python data exporter, same functionality, just Python versus SQL, it'll work. Uh, we're going to fix the bug uh, in the SQL context, so that should be um, patched by the time this comes out. You shouldn't run into that issue. But if you do face an error with a reserved word, 
um, give a Python data exporter a shot. So we've exported this to BigQuery. And now if we go to BigQuery and we uh, reload this, you're gonna see, um, you might see two tables if you use the SQL exporter. We stage uh, the SQL exporter, so there'll be a staging table, um, uh, which is this first table. Um, the second table, yellow cab data, uh, contains our taxi cab data. So just like that, we've taken the data from Google Cloud Store, read it into Mage, um, and then exported it to BigQuery. Uh, and that's the last of our ETL uh, workflows. So next we're gonna talk about some advanced Mage concepts, um, some fancy ways you can use blocks, pipeline variables, and a few other things uh, to really take your pipelines to the next level. Um, oh, one more thing, we can talk about scheduling. Um, yeah, so we have this pipeline, it's working. Mage is an orchestrator, so we need to schedule our workflows. So how do we do that? Well, we go into triggers. And so triggers are what schedule uh, workflows, workflows in Mage. Um, if you click run at once, it's just gonna run the pipeline. But if we create a trigger, we have all these different ways to trigger that pipeline. So um, there are a bunch of configurations. We can set variables, which we'll talk about in our advanced concepts. We can set a timeout. Um, and we can trigger the run on a schedule, on an event, or from some API webhook, uh, maybe. Um, so we'll use a schedule because that's pretty uh, pretty ubiquitous in data engineering. We'll call it um, GCS to BigQuery schedule. Um, we can add a description, and then for a frequency, uh, Mage makes this really simple. So no cron syntax, no weird stuff. Although if you do select custom, you can enter in uh, your own cron. Um, but we're going to run this daily. Um, we set a start date, and then after that date, it'll uh, trigger automatically, you know, daily. Um, and then uh, as Mage also supports a landing time. So you could say, instead of running this on a certain date, run it by a certain time, and then we'll calculate the runtime and back into that. Um, so we can save our changes there, uh, enable the trigger. And now we have um, our workflow scheduled and active in Mage. And this is the orchestration piece, right? We build pipelines, schedule them, we can create dependencies, for example. Um, then if we wanted a pipeline to run on completion of this one, we could chain them together, um, et cetera. So um, yeah, that's been a, a ETL pipeline uh, in Mage from cloud storage to an OLAP database. Um, up next, we're gonna talk about some advanced concepts, ways you can take your pipelines to the next level uh, using things like dynamic, um, blocks using things like conditional blocks um, and pipeline variables, a few other interesting concepts. Uh, then at the end of the course, we'll have a homework for you, um, but that's pretty much it using ETL and Mage. There are a bunch of advanced topics you can dive into, um, but I'd recommend checking out our docs. We'll talk more about that later. Um, until next time, uh, looking forward to it. <laughs>